10. This is Recto Magnetism Practice Knowledge Assessment T8 and T9 from the National Training Package. As with all our videos, a quick rundown with how it works. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to ask you a question or a problem is posed. Uh, you pause the video and try to solve that problem. Continue to play the video and I'm going to give you a hint and then you can uh, continue to the solution. Uh, again, play the video, we'll give you an answer, that's the power behind our system. This allows you to see uh, where you've uh, done well or where you need further help. And then play, continue to play the video and we'll give you the next question. So let's get on with question one for this section. A DC shunt generator's terminal voltage is controlled by putting a variable resistor where? A. In parallel with the armature. B. In series with the shunt field. C. In parallel with the shunt field. D. In series slash parallel with the shunt field. Here's your hint. Um, draw the circuit diagram of a shunt motor. So a shunt motor is generated to control by putting a variable resistor in series with the shunt field. So here's my quick drawing, just an armature. And I need it's going to vary the field, I need to put a variable resistor in here. And here's my shunt field. So there's my shunt field. And there's my terminals. So I can vary the voltage here across the shunt with my variable resistor. Therefore, I can vary the output of the generator. Two, identify the generator type in this particular diagram. So is it A, a series generator? B, is it a shunt generator? C, is it a parallel generator? Or is it A, D, a series shunt generator? So here's your hint, follow out the current path. So where's the current paths? So this is a series generator. So this resistor here was just the load. So we can kind of just ignore him for now. And here's our supply through the field, through the armature, and back out on the terminals. So it's a series generator because the field coils are in series with the armature. Two, identify the generator type using the graph of output voltage versus speed. So is this a series generator? B, a shunt generator, C, a differential compound generator, or D, a shunt separately excited generator. So, have a think about that. Which generator has this shape, speed curve? So think back to the speed curves you did for generators. There's only one that has a nice linear, flat, straight line curve. And that was the shunt generator separately excited. So it's a shunt generator where the field is excited from somewhere apart from the generator itself. It has a perfectly straight output line relationship between voltage output and RPM input. Question three, a shunt generator has an armature resistance of 0.07 ohms and a field resistance of 100 ohms. 
The load connected is 9.2 kilowatts and is supplied from a 240 volt DC supply. Determine the armature current and the generated EMF. So pause here while you think about it. So here's the hint, here's the two formulas you're going to need. Current through the armature equals I load plus I field and the EMF is equal to the volts at the terminal plus the volts at the armature. So here's our answer. Let's go down the left hand column first. And the current through the armature is important, we need that. And it's the I load plus the I field. So again, if we draw a little picture maybe first, here's my generator. We said it was a shunt arrangement, so we'll draw our field in parallel. So there it is there. And the current here, current the I total, the current in the armature, has got to be the current taken by the load. So here's my load, I'll just put that in. So I've got current has to be supplied load and it has to get supplied through the field. So those two added together have to end up being this current here through the armature. So our I load is simply our 9.2 kilowatts divided by our 240 giving me 83.3 amperes. I can work out the current in the field because again it's got 240 volts. They tell us it was 100 ohms so we know that the field here was 100 ohms and that gives me 2.4. I add them, two of them together and I get an answer of 40.73 amps. The voltage across the terminals, the EMF, has to be the voltage across the terminal plus the voltage across the armature. Well, the voltage across the terminal is easy because they tell us it's 240. The voltage across the armature a little more difficult. We need the current through the armature, which we've already worked out. So we worked out that one up out here before and the resistance through the armature. So we know that the current through the armature is 40.73, there it is there, multiplied by the resistance, which we were told in the question, multiplied by 2.44 volts, sorry, equals 2.44, so we just simply add the 240 volts to the 2.44, giving us a total answer of 200 and 42.44 volts. Question four, which DC motor listed below is best used with a load requiring a high torque constant with large speed and sudden variations? So which DC motor listed is best suited with a load requiring high start torque, constant speed and a large and sudden variation to the load? And again, they've given you a hint up early, try eliminating options based on motor characteristics. So think about the motor characteristics. A, a differentially compounded motor, a series connected motor, C, a shunt connected motor, or D, a cumulative compound motor. 
So what are the characteristics of each of those four? Which one might best suit? So the answer is the cumulative compound motor is going to give us the best characteristics. So it has both a series and a um, parallel component to the field. And because it's in what we call com um, cumulative compound, it gives us that great characteristics of high start torque, constant speed, and it can cope with large and sudden variations and changes in load. So it's a complex machine, but it does the best for those attributes. Five, the torque of a shunt connected DC motor is the product of which two units? A, supply voltage and supply current. B, the field flux and the field current. C, the field flux and armature current, and D, the armature current and the field current. So which ones of those two units do we multiply together to give us the torque? That's what product means. So here's the hint. Draw the diagram with the interplay of the fields. So it is the field flux and the armature current. Those two things, so the armature current, representing the field that will oppose the field flux, those two are the two that are interacting with each other. So you've got the armature field interacting with the field flux. Multiply the current and the field flux and you'll give you the torque. Six, if the load is decreased on a series DC motor, the result will be what? The speed will decrease, B, a decrease in the line voltage, C, the torque will increase, or D, the speed will increase. So what are the characteristics around a DC motor? And what if we decrease the load? So again, list the characteristics for a series motor. Think about how it's connected and how it operates. So series motors are very well known for their speed will increase. To get grunt and any use out of a series motor, you've got to keep the load well and truly on it. If you lightly loaded, it will increase its speed considerably. Seven, how will a DC series motor respond on no load? So thinking about our previous question and its answer, how will a DC series motor respond on no load? Here's your hint, the characteristics for a series motor again. What are they? So how will it respond? A, run up to about 20% of the rated speed. Increase speed to a dangerously high level. Will not start. Rotate at a rated speed until the load is applied. So the answer is it's increase its speed to dangerously high levels. When we say dangerously high, it can rotate so fast that it will actually, the centrifugal force will quite often strip off the armature windings. Eight, the curve below is for a series DC motor load characteristic. Curve A represents what? Curve B represents what? So you've got a choice. Is A, speed or torque or voltage or current? 
is B, speed, torque or voltage or current. So we're trying to determine what the vertical axis is at its scale. You can see from the diagram that the horizontal scale is current. So as current goes up, B goes down and A goes up. So what responses would they be? So A is the torque. So as the load current goes up on a series motor, the torque goes up. How hard it pushes around increases, so that's torque. B is the lower the current, the higher the speed. But the higher the load, the lower the speed. So again, this brings us to the end of T8, T9. Thanks for, again, listening and learning a little bit more about motors and electromagnetism.